As a driving instructor, I often get phone calls from people claiming that they can drive just fine, but they're not sure if they're doing all the mirror checks needed to pass the driving test. So here's a video on what mirror checks you need to make to not only be a safe driver, but to pass the driving test in the UK. Firstly, I'm gonna start off with the checks you need to make before you move away. Now, the DVSA, who are the people who set the test, so this is from the horse's mouth, so to speak, have a book called Guide to Driving the Essential Skills. And it states, make your final safety checks, use your mirrors and look over your right shoulder to check your blind spot. Now, of course, they're assuming you're on the left-hand side of the road. If you're on the right-hand side of the road, you would be checking your left blind spot. It doesn't state you need to check both blind spots, just the roadside blind spot. But it doesn't state which mirrors to check. It just says mirrors. So, which mirrors do you need to check? The answer is whatever mirrors help you see what's coming up behind. This is the most important mirror because it gives you a true image of what's behind you Therefore, it's easy to judge how far away things are. This mirror gives you a bit more information to the right and some more drives, but things look smaller, so it's much harder to make your decision if it's safe to go as things look further away. This mirror isn't that much help at the moment because it's only given me a little bit more pavement than I can already see in this mirror. And anyone standing on that pavement isn't going to affect my decision to move that way. However, if someone was leaning against my car, that would probably affect my decision, but I would notice that anyway, because I'll have a figure in my peripheral vision leaning against my car, and I'm gonna be thinking, what on earth is that person doing leaning against the side of my car? Many people mention that one of the problems you need to worry about on this side is cyclists cycling past you and then jumping out in front of you. But by the time I've checked my mirrors to make sure it's safe to go and my blind spot, when I look forwards again, which I will do before I move, I would see them jump in front of me, so I'll be aware that they're there. Also, I have my peripheral vision still, so I can see them coming up alongside me, and I've checked this mirror as well, and I'll keep an eye on this mirror until I actually move, so I'll see them coming up behind before they passed anyway. However, on this occasion, this mirror isn't that helpful because all I can see is this red car behind me without much else, it's blocking my view. But this mirror is helpful because I can see around the bend, I can see that white car coming through the gap between the red and the gray cars. And I can see cars in this right wing mirror as well. So if I was moving away from here, I would primarily be checking my left and right wing mirrors, but being very careful about distance because it's harder to judge the distance in the wing mirrors as things look small. So check whatever mirrors help you see what's coming. I don't agree with standardized six point checks because you think more about where you're looking than who you're looking for. I used to teach the six point check up until about 2010 when I gave up because I noticed people were just trying to look where I was telling them to look instead of trying to put their efforts into seeing what's coming. The most important thing though is to keep checking the relevant mirrors. Don't check them and move away later because the situation changes. You've got to keep looking at them and look forwards until you're actually moving to make sure you can stay on top of what's coming. Try to check your center and your right mirror before moving to the other side of the road to pass the parked car. You're looking for anyone that could be overtaking you such as cars or motorbikes. And before you move back to the correct side of the road, check your center and left mirror just in case something is passing you on the left, such as a cyclist. Check your mirrors a couple of seconds before you make the turn so that you have time to react to what you see. If you need to slow down, you should check your center mirror first to see if anyone is close behind you. If there is someone close, you can brake gently. However, you should be braking gently anyway. And if you do need to brake harshly, I don't recommend checking behind you. I recommend focusing on what it is you're trying to avoid. Before the emergency stop, you don't need to check the mirror because there's no time. It's an emergency, you need to stop now. And the same could be argued for any other kind of more hurried stop not emergency levels of hurry, but a stop where you need to stop quickly. Checking your mirror is only gonna delay when you start braking, meaning you're gonna to have to brake more harshly. If you start braking as early as you possibly can, you're already braking as gently as you can before the hazard. And the more gently you brake, the safer it is. The more you delay your brake by looking up here, the more dangerous it is. 
even though it's my opinion that you need to look forwards when you need to brake suddenly on the driving test if you brake harshly without checking your mirror you will be marked down I've never had anyone mark down or fail a driving test for braking gently without checking the mirror, only for braking harshly. Doesn't make sense to me because if you need to brake, you need to brake. Braking gently isn't an option if you need to brake suddenly and checking your mirror only delays it and possibly creates an emergency, a full on emergency stop instead of a more sudden stop. The only situation I can actually think of where braking would be an option where you could check your mirror and think, actually, I can't brake that harshly, is if a small animal was to run out in front of you in the road. Unfortunately for that small animal, braking harshly may be more dangerous for you and the car behind than braking gently. You need to check your mirrors before you signal with the indicator. So if you're going to signal left, centre and left mirror first, then you can signal left. And before you signal right, check your center and right mirror. It's important to check your mirrors before you signal so that you don't panic anyone who may already be passing you. Also, it gives you a good idea of what's coming up behind so that you're prepared for any approaching danger. It's also a good idea to check your mirrors before moving into one of these waiting areas in the middle because the mirrors before your signal may be getting a bit old. If you need to wait for oncoming cars before turning right, it's a good idea to check your right mirror again to make sure no one's trying to pass you. It's unlikely someone's trying to pass you because there's oncoming cars, but grade A idiots do exist. Before moving away at lights, check your left and right wing mirrors to make sure no cyclists of course up with you. It's much more important when you're turning left or right. When moving away at temporary traffic lights, make sure you check your centre and right mirror first to make sure no one is already passing you. Even if you think there's not enough room for a car to pass you because the oncoming cars are in the way, don't forget about cyclists and motorbikes. They may try to squeeze past even with the oncoming cars. Make sure you check your centre and right mirror before changing to the right lane and check your centre and left mirror before changing to the left lane. It's really important to make sure you're not gonna make anyone break when you change lane, which is why you need to be aware of what's coming up behind you. When merging with a motorway or a dual carriageway via a slip road, such as I am now, try not to put too much time into checking your mirrors because at the moment it's not very helpful and it's just dangerous because you lose your position. However, when you start getting near the blend line, check your center and right mirror regularly, particularly your right mirror, to make sure no fool is pulling up alongside you as you cross the blend line. If you want to speed up, let's say you're driving lower than the speed limit, like I am now, and you think, oh, I can go faster. Check your center and right mirror first. It's really unfair to speed up as people are overtaking you. It's not safe. And on a dual carriageway like this, the person who's overtaking you may be doing 70 miles an hour. If you speed up the 70 miles an hour, they may not be able to get past. And you may force them to either slow down and go behind you or break the speed limit. At the moment, I'm not going 70 because weather. When turning right at a roundabout, you're normally in the right lane and quite often you need to move to the left to leave. Make sure you check your center and left mirror before you change lane to leave. Obviously, that's just like a normal lane change. And if someone's alongside you, you might have to go round the roundabout again or even exit in the right lane if there's two lanes on the exit like there is here. On your driving test, it's your responsibility to follow the road ahead unless your examiner tells you to go left or right. So that's why when you leave a roundabout, you're normally aiming for the left lane because it's the left lane that allows you to go ahead most of the time. Unless road signs or markings indicate otherwise, of course, or 
you know you need the right lane because you're about to turn right soon. When you get the opportunity to pass a cyclist, make sure you check your centre and right mirror first. And if you feel it's necessary, you can signal. But if you feel it's obvious you're about to pass the cyclist, then there's no need. If you want to pull over at the side of the road, firstly check your centre mirror and your left mirror so you can see what's beside you and you can warn the people behind that you are stopping with the indicator. If there's no one around, there's no need to indicate when you pull over. But if there's anyone behind or in front, it's very helpful to tell them what you're doing. I often hear that you should check both your mirrors and both your blind spots before you move out of a parking space, but that's not true. You don't need to do that to pass the driving test. You just need to look where the danger is. At the moment, my right blind spot shows a car, not very helpful if I'm moving that way, and my right mirror shows a black fence. I knew they were there before I go to set off. My left blind spot actually has a gate to the field, so there could be something coming out of there, so I will be looking over there. My left mirror is really giving me no help at all again. I am moving that way after all. Most of the danger is in front of me. So if I'm to move away from here, I will have a look over there quickly because I'm aware there is a gate there, but I'm mostly cautious about what's coming from the right here behind this car. So I will move out really gingerly in case someone's coming. And I'm more interested in other cars in the parking spaces in case they start moving at the same time as me. So I'm watching out for that as well. When I reverse, I primarily use my mirrors for accuracy. They give me a little bit of information of what's coming behind, but not enough. I actually need to look around 360 degrees to see what's coming, and then I use my mirrors to guide the car between the lines. And every so often, I'll update myself by checking around again to make sure I can see if anyone's coming. Then I get back to the mirrors, to guide the car between these lines of this parking space. You may have heard that you need to check your mirrors every 10 seconds and make it super obvious that you're checking them to pass the driving test, but that's not true. The driving examiners are experts at knowing whether or not you have checked your mirrors and they would rather you keep your eyes on the road and only check them when it's relevant because that is safer. You may have been told to check your mirrors every so many seconds because the driving instructor is trying to play it safe, that if you check them enough, hopefully, you won't miss an important mirror check. But in my opinion, taking your eye off the road more than you need to isn't a good idea. So essentially, you need to check your mirrors before you change direction or speed. When we say direction, we don't mean bends. We're talking about reposition yourself within the road or changing lane. If you're gonna to move to the left, check your center and left mirror first. If you're gonna to move to the right, check your center and right mirror first. If you need to slow down, check your center mirror first. And if you need to speed up, check your center and right mirror. Now that doesn't mean you've got to check your center and right mirror just as you pull out of a junction because you're speeding up. You've already checked it safe before you pull out of that junction so you know the situation. It's more for changes in speed limit. Let's say you're in a 30 and you come to a 40. Before you accelerate to the 40, make sure no one's overtaking you. Or if you've been traveling at a constant speed and you realize you want to speed up, again, check to see who's overtaking you so it doesn't make it harder for them to overtake you. However, I'm sure you'll probably be aware if someone's overtaking you anyway. Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. Check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood can help without affecting the owner's policy, risking their no claims bonus, and it takes away some of the stress from the supervisor when they're supervising you in their car. Via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. Also, check out confused.com. You can fill out one quote form and get many quotes back from different insurers and you can change the car on that quote as many times as you like if you're thinking of buying a car and you want to compare which one is cheapest to insure. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support this channel. So thank you very much for that. Check out Facebook and Instagram if you wish. They're both Conquer Driving and subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.